and welcome to the Metal Mix I'm here on KZQ 89.5 FM Action Oregon and 4.1 FM Metro Oregon and streaming on KZQ.org. It's the boy, it's the Don, DJ Rambo. On the line, on the line, we have three time Emmy Award winner, six times nominated, has been on a ton of releases. This guy is just a straight virtuoso from hell, has worked with some of the best guitar players in the world, some of the best artists. We have the one and only Brian Tarquin on the line. How's it going, my brother? Good, man. Thanks for having me. Oh, of course, man. Um, as a guitar player of 20 years, I was beyond excited to have you on because, man, it's like, it's almost like you were born with that uh, stuck to the side of your hip. Do you go to bed with that guitar? <laughs> it feels like it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's, uh, you know, if, uh, 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 funny question in the beginning, what's the longest you've ever gone without playing your guitar? Oh, uh, I guess weeks, you know, maybe when I'm on vacation, maybe a month or two, something like that. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Alright, uh, Brian, before we get into Brothers of Arms, because there's so much about it, man, I want to know a little bit about you, man. Um, in in your entire life, if you were to go back now and see yourself as a teenager, did you ever expect anything like this to happen? And also, after you, your dreams have, a, have came true... Is it everything that you expected it to be? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I never would have imagined to play with all these guys, you know. Um, it's, uh, it's it's pretty pretty amazing, you know. I, I thought, uh, you know, when I, I think when I was a teenager, I was in uh, various bands and everything, and, you know, um, we, you know, a lot of these guys weren't even out yet. And, and it's, it's amazing because, you know, the... Um, I didn't know that you could do all of this in music. You know, back then you just thought, well, you're either in a big rock band or you're not, and you're, you're famous or you're not. And, you know, it's, it's very cool to be able to, you know, work with these cats because it's uh, such great, great players. And, you know, Patriotti is one of my favorites. And he's such a great guy to work with, and we hit it off right away. Oh, yeah, I know it did. And what's insane is that you're working with a ton of different guitar players. And one of the, one of them that kind of uh, caught me with surprise was uh, Travis Stever from Coheed and Camera. Like, um, Coheed and Camera, for me, I feel like maybe they're, like, a, almost like a whole different genre in itself, but it does have, like, a lot of, like, rock and roll elements. Like, for choosing everybody on this project, were you looking for something special to add to maybe like make this whole album into like one big whole piece or what was what was your what was your thought process behind uh, the collaboration of this album yeah you know when I when I wrote the songs I you know I like to get new blood into the you know when people that I haven't worked with and like younger guys that are into guitar um so it was actually nice to, to uh, a buddy of mine actually introduced me uh to Travis and he's a, he's a great guy and he really dug the project, and, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's a New York guy like me, and so I figured, you know, this, this was a, you know, a really cool thing to kind of, you know, get, I, you know, because I know Kobe DiCambria is kind of a genre of their own, you know, yep. it's, uh, yeah, they're, they're their own vibe to everything, but, um, yeah, it, it was actually a real uh, a treat. I also worked with this other cat that nobody really actually knows about. He's a young guy from um, Germany, his name is Johannes Bike, and he's um, a great guitarist, so I had him on a couple of tracks because, you know, he's in this band called Son of a Box, but he actually, um, kind of, like in that band, he dresses up like, you know, Amadeus, and they do this whole, this whole really cool kind of, uh, uh, you know, video thing, but, um, you know, I, I wanted to, you know, when I did these records, I'd like to get a well-rounded group of guitarists. So everybody from like the well known to the not well known and, and as long as they fit the genre of the music I I'm always, you know, down for all that. I I love it, man. I love it. Um, you know, you've you've done so many collaborations. What's like the biggest challenge when, when you're collaborating with another guitar player? Are there some guitar players that are like one take Johnny's? Are there some people that are like just really specific in their sound? Or or is it where you know, nowadays with technology, I know you can just send a track over and somebody can pretty much lay over it. Like, like how, how do you go about, like, the recording process and knowing what kind of solos and what kind of leads and what kind of riffs uh, fit your songs? You know, it's weird. You know, when I do it, I write the song and, uh, you know, I have with the, um, you know, you speak, speak to the artist beforehand and see the sound for it and everything. And okay. So I'll, I'll write the tracks for him. Okay. You know, know like I know his style and so I'm familiar with how he could work in this track and uh, so then I then I actually sent him the track in kind of the area where he can you know lay down a solo but you know the solo I, I leave all up to those guys you know to improvise 
wind up doing 20 takes and liking the first one. So it's one of those things that, you know, it's, it's different. You know, you know, a lot of the album was done over the, the lockdown, um, you know, in 2021 and, and, and 20. And, and so, you know, a lot, of, a lot of guys were at home. And so because a lot of people can't move around, yeah. they did the tracks. So, um, so that was actually, and, and I was fortunate enough because people were on lockdown that they didn't have any uh, busy touring schedule. So it kind of worked out with the record. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. You know, um, Brian, um, always, you know, looking to all the work and, and everything that, you know, you've produced, recorded, like the whole shebang, how, do you think if you were to have today's technology 40 or 50 years ago, you think you might have produced, like, double the amount of music? Because, I mean, the challenges from back in the day to now are probably massive. What, what's your take on that? Yeah, you're right. You know, I think about that sometimes, 30, 35 years ago. I had had this technology. Yeah, I probably would have done a lot. Probably would have done a, a lot in those days because in those days you had to go to a studio. Plus, you didn't really have digital, yeah. and it, the only we had was maybe digital tape. But you still had to go to a studio. There was no internet. There was no emails or any of that. So you were really like that was to get everybody in the same room and to do to do something like this would be almost impossible because you'd have to get everybody yeah. kind of in the city in the same so there you know with technology has really brought us a long way and that's one of the great things about you know technology is people can can actually do that you know, I, I recorded a lot of parts a lot of the album on tape I still have a two inch tape machine yeah, and yeah. I have a log deck and of course you know I, I uh, basically um, transferred it over to digital for you know for me to fly mm -hmm. the tracks necessary but um you know, the drums were all done live, you know, here. And then, uh, of course, uh, you know, after the, you know, once the lockdown happened and all the other tracks had to be put in, you know, uh, one of the reasons why I played a lot of, you know, all, all the bass, basically, is because there was, you know, you couldn't get anybody at that point to do, to come over and play the bass. And I, I liked it better if I played it with the drummer. And so, you know, that, that's kind of, you know, kind of the uh, thing. But, yeah, technology, technology is... A wonderful thing these days. <laughs> One last question on technology. Um, as a guitar player uh, myself, you know, I've, I've been playing two bands um, throughout my whole life growing up. And now there's like the convenience of like plugins, um, pedals with cab simulators, um, tempers. Um, have you dived into um, any of, of the new like uh, sort of distortions and all the new like setups you can choose? Or, or on your album, are you? Are you mixing it, or are you using two amps? Like, what what do you think about like this this shift in like uh, powered amps? You know, I mean, I see the reason why. I mean, certainly if you're a band uh, touring a lot, it's going to make life a lot easier um, because you don't have to bring all these heavy amps. I personally am an old school two guitar guy amp, and I have a big collection of amps, so everything on the album I did record uh, on amp. And live in the studio with microphones and preamps and the whole the whole thing. I, as far as diving into it, I, I haven't really ever dove into it though. From what I understand, um, I've dove in a little bit, and, and, and it's gotten a lot better than they were at one time. One time they were really, you know, quite, I guess, flat and digital. But now, you know, they're quite convincing now. So, um, but I do like. Uh, I, I definitely. Do like uh, my amps. <laughs> my two amps. <laughs> oh, uh, one last question on amps. Um, so when you, so when the guitar players are like, uh, you know, writing the guitar solos and all that um, over the tracks that you wrote, are do you already have them like have like a preset distortion that they play through so that way it like keeps the correlation of the song, or 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 you kind of just let them uh, do their own thing. Oh, yeah, I let them do their own thing. You know, um, when they do it, I let them choose the, the tone and everything. You know, I, I wrote the songs for them, knowing their style and knowing their tone and knowing how they'll, they'll kind of approach it. So with that, I just, I send them the song and just have them go to town and just, you know, this is yours, so just do it. Yeah. No, hey, yeah. That's, that's so badass, man. I wish... That just sounds like heaven, man, being able to, like, just, like, sit down and be like, all right, what type of juggernaut of album do I want to choose and have all, all yeah. these 
all these musicians, and now, like, you know, talking about, like, technology, how you can just produce album after album, are you just, like, are you just, like, going crazy with ideas and just constantly putting them down nowadays? Yeah, you know, with, with that, it makes it a lot easier, you know, to, to, uh, to put down the ideas and, and also to kind of like, you know, for instance, like one of the, one of the songs on there, um, I had the Budapest Orchestra on there, so it made it easy for me to actually put a temp string part down on there, and then uh, I sent it to them, and, uh, you know, they, they were able to... Uh, you know, kind of base the whole thing off the string part and also, you know, when it, when it was all, uh, you know, orchestrated. So it is, uh, it is a great, a great thing to have. I, that's great, man. That's great. I know, I know, uh, a lot of my favorite songs on the album were like Purple Heart, D-Day, Devil Simpson. Purple Heart to me, like, I felt like kind of stuck out like a sore thumb and, and, and kind of like in, when I saw the list of guitar players, it made me go to like certain songs immediately because I was like, how is this going to sound behind that guy? How is it, you know? Right. How is this going to sound behind that guy? And and you totally nailed it on the songs. And honestly, even from like Travis uh, Seaver, like I I just never thought he was a guitar player like that. And I think it's cool that you're introducing guitar players that aren't as known and that mixing it with guitar players that are known. I think that's really awesome, and it really showcases that there's a lot of talented uh, musicians out there. Yeah, absolutely. That's what that's that's really what I was trying to do. You know, showcase everybody. <laughs> it's great, man. It's great. It's just, man, you, you've done so much with with guitar, man, and and so much shredding. Is there, um, is there anybody right now that that's playing guitar that like maybe you got your eye on that you think like they're doing good things for the scene? Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure. You know, um, I always really wanted to work with Eddie Van Halen, and that that, that, mm. uh, that that broke my heart when he when he passed away. Um, I, you know, it, 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 it's true. There, there are a lot of uh, really good guitars out there that are unknown. So it's, uh, you know, I'm always keeping my eye out on everything. I, I love it. I love it. Um, Brian, for, for people that may not know you, um, is there a couple of songs on this album that you might recommend? Because I know for me, for all the listeners out there, listen to everything. Every song on here. It's absolutely badass. But let's just say somebody, for the sake of argument, only has five minutes in the day of their time. What song would you pick off this album for them to listen to that would make them want to listen to everything else? Um, that's a good question. I, you know, I, I like there's, there's each one I like for certain reasons. Mm-hmm. Each one I, I didn't really like the speed of sound, um, uh, the the Satriani one. Oh, uh, gorgeous. Just, um, and also, you know, I I, I like Hounds of Hell because of all of the uh, the intricate string work of the Budapest Orchestra. So those are those are a couple of my favorites. I love it. I love it. Um, Brian, uh, before we end the interview, is it okay if I throw you three random questions? Yeah, sure. All right, Brian. In your entire career, who is somebody um, you thought was really great and really awesome musician that you met and that you were happy that they were actually really nice? <laughs> <laughs> Went off 
and then there's bands that, are, that rat that kind of sat around, kind of like Warrant that kind of sat around. Is there is there a band that you wish would have got more recognition that they maybe didn't? Yeah, you know, um, yeah, rock bands or just artists? Or um, rock bands or artists, whatever, whichever you choose. Uh, let me think about this. Yeah, there's 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 so many that uh, that kind of slip through the uh, the wayside. Um, uh, You know, um, Rainbow was a band that I thought didn't, you know, wasn't as popular as I thought it would be here. Okay. They were they were in other places, but Rainbow was that was a hell of a band under Dio with with Richie Blackmore, and you know they they were big to a certain degree, but I think it was more mostly Europe and yeah, but they weren't super big here. Okay, no, uh, definitely. Well, uh, Brian, I appreciate your time so much. Um, everybody, please check out uh, Brother, Brothers in Arms. Uh, just absolutely destroyed. Um, so many amazing guitar players on there, um, from known to unknown, that I would absolutely just go check out. If you love guitar playing, if you love shredding, if you love multiple styles of guitar playing and intricacy, this is something for you to listen to. Brothers in Arms by Brian Parkland. Brian, thank you so much for being on the Metal Mixtape. And last but not least, before I let you go, though, can you say this is Brian Tarklin, and you are listening to the Metal Mixtape? Yeah. This is Brian Tarklin, and you're listening to the Metal Mixtape. Brian, I appreciate you, brother. Um, I'm going to air this this Thursday, and I'll, I'll shoot all the tags to you and everything. And much love. Yeah. You have a great day, my friend. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.